as software engineers, debugging our code is a critical skill that we need to be able to develop. And let's be honest here, if you're a beginner or even a more senior engineer, you're often finding yourself writing console write line to try and help debug your programs. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to walk through some basics of using conditional breakpoints inside of Visual Studio. Like I mentioned, a lot of us are just used to using console write line to get by. And if you think about it, your IDE is probably sitting there just like that meme where it's like, am I a joke to you? Right? We have these other tools that are built into Visual Studio and other IDEs that let us do a better job of debugging. A quick reminder to subscribe to the channel and to check that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Now, let's check out the code. We're going to walk through a very trivial code example just so that we can illustrate how to use the tools inside of Visual Studio for this. This very simple example is going to assume that we have this list here called some names. I've just put a handful of names into this list. You'll notice that some of them are four letters long. Some of them are a little longer with five characters and one in particular is only three characters. We have a loop here on the screen, this for each loop from line 15 to 21, and it's got a problem inside of it. We're going to try and print the fourth character of every single name that we have in this list. If you were paying close attention, it's kind of obvious, but one of the names in the list right on line seven, Tim does not have enough characters to be able to print the fourth. So if we were to go run this and I'll just go ahead and press play, it's gonna be a little bit disappointing. And that's because it's gonna throw an exception. Like I said, this is gonna be a very trivial contrived example, just so that I can show you the tools for how to do this. So something that we might do is we might go, you know, if the output that we were aiming for wasn't already to write to the console, we're trying to do some other processing with this. We might try to put something like an if statement in here. And then we could say like, if the name that we're looking at is less than four in length, right? So how many characters have we got? It's less than four. It's going to go check to see which name that you're coming across is causing the error before it happens. So you might go do some type of console write line so that you can see the information coming through. Maybe you don't even have the if statement, right? Maybe you do this kind of thing and you start printing out all of the names that are coming through. But a lot of us rely on console write line so that we can go find where the problem is before it happens. But what I want to show you if we go do this, right? A lot of us debug this way, right? We would see in the console, the name Tim only has three characters and we'd have this aha moment. Like now we have to go find how we're getting Tim into our data set, what we're supposed to do about that. But this is like the, the pretty basic way that a lot of us debug things. I kind of made a joke in the beginning about this being a very beginner way to do it. But like, honestly, it's so simple. A lot of the time for us to be able to do this kind of stuff that we just go do it now. Where this really falls down is especially in distributed systems. So if you're running a web service and to repeat the issue, you're kind of relying on something happening, you know, once something's been deployed, writing to the console maybe isn't a very effective way to try getting that information, right? But that aside, something that we can do instead of just putting if statements in and writing to the console is something called a conditional breakpoint. And that's the whole point of this video. I just wanted to show you kind of like where the logic comes from, why we might want to use something like this. So we know that the exception is going to be thrown on line 17 when the name is too short, right? Tim in this case is too short. I can put a breakpoint here. And if we just have a breakpoint and go run this, it's going to step through all of them, right? So every time I press F5, it will kind of keep jumping through the list one more time. And now we have an error come up, right? Kind of helpful if you want to go debug and step through, but imagine you had a million things in a list, right? Imagine you're querying a database and pulling back a million names. Are you going to sit there and press F5 on your keyboard up to a million times? Probably not. And you could go do the console write line thing, right? You probably don't want to print out all a million of those as well and try to scan through them, but you could use an if statement or you could do a conditional breakpoint. So with our breakpoint placed in the left bar here in Visual Studio, I can right click on it and go to conditions. From here, we have a couple of different options, condition expression, hit count and filter. I'm just going to use conditional expression, and then I'm going to type the expression that I want to break on. So this is very much like us typing an if statement into the code, right? So I would say if the name dot length, and you'll notice as I'm typing, we do get the autocomplete IntelliSense coming up for us, which is awesome so you don't have to try and remember all the things like you get that power of the editor right in this little tool 
So if the name length is less than four, that's when I want to break. So I just pressed enter after doing that. If you had more complex conditions you wanted to work with, you could add another one. This will end the condition for you. But for now, we're just gonna roll with this. So if the name is less than four for the length, we're going to break. I have to do this before the exception's actually thrown. So if I put the breakpoint, say on line 18, it would be too late. We would already hit that error. So if I go run this now, we hit our breakpoint and the condition we set was the name length has to be less than four. So it should not be the first iteration of the loop. It should in fact have broken once we hit Tim. And if we go check what the name is, you can see when I hover over this, it does say Tim. So the condition had to be met for this breakpoint to get hit. Pretty cool. That's the basics of this. I just wanna show you one more pretty handy thing. So if I go back to the condition, right? So I'm gonna go here. I right clicked on it, go to the menu conditions. We also have actions that we can take instead. So I had a little snippet of code here that I saved. So I'm gonna put this into action here and we can print out to the console. So you don't have to write console write line anymore, right? You don't have to go change the code to do this, which is pretty handy. And what I wanna do is basically break once this happens, right? So we'll hit the condition. The action that we're going to take is to write a message to the console. And I should have shown you that the way that this works here, right? If I open up a curly brace, if I start typing again, we get the autocomplete. So it's not like you have to guess at what to do. Like you do get all of the power of Visual Studio autocomplete and IntelliSense right in here. So I'm just gonna put that back. I just wanted to demonstrate that that's what's happening. The continue code execution, I don't want this checked off. The reason I don't want this to happen is because what we'll do is we would print to the console and then we would throw the exception. What I would prefer to have happen is that we hit the breakpoint conditionally, we'll write something to the console and then we can go examine what's going on. So let me close this. I'm gonna go ahead and press play again. We should again be breaking on Tim because I didn't change the condition. So when I hover over, we see Tim here. But now if I wanted to go see what was printed to the console, I guess it's gonna be the debug output, not the console, I'm sorry. So name Tim only has three characters. So we could go check this debug output have all this other information printed for helping us, and we can conditionally break the execution and stop to investigate other things if we wanted to. And that's a very quick look at conditional breakpoints inside of Visual Studio. I don't know if that's gonna totally persuade you to stop using console write line in your debugging efforts. I know that I still use it. I know lots of other software engineers that still rely on that sort of thing, especially because it's simple enough to do in some cases. However, we do have plenty of advanced tools that we can use inside of things like Visual Studio, or if you're using other IDEs, they have lots of great tools too. These things are being built out to make our lives easier. So I do suggest you try them out, get used to them because they can enable more than just a simple console write line. If you found this useful and you wanna see more debugging tips inside of Visual Studio, you can check out this video next. Thanks and I'll see you next time.